Now in the last video of this biopsy, I have covered about the introduction aims. What are the indications, contraindications, then classification about the various mass screening methods that were the exfoliative cytology in depth, then the brush biopsy, and there were like various light-based detection systems. So I have covered about that in the last video of this biopsy. Now in this video, I'm going to cover about all the various types of biopsy in depth. Now what are the different methods of biopsy? So if you get a question on any one of the biopsy that you have to explain. So first you have to write about this classification, how they are classified. So biopsy it is classified basically into three main types. First is closed indirect method, closed image guided biopsy. And the third one is the open direct. Open direct is obviously you are doing some like you're opening that site and you are directly seeing that area. So it comes under this open direct. So the ones which are coming under this open direct are the incisional and the excisional and the ones which are closed indirect. So in this you're not any like you're not making incision or something like that. You're just doing the biopsy in the closed manner. So in that there's this fine needle aspiration, core needle, punch and loop and there's this endoscopic biopsy. The, the next one is the closed image guided. So with the help of some images you do the biopsy. So these are like with the help of ultrasound, CT, MRI. So these are like various closed image guided. Starting with the first, that is the fine needle aspiration cytology. Now, as the name says, it is fine needle. So in this, you're using a fine needle that is like the diameter, it is less. So it is known as fine needle. Now, aspiration is because you're aspirating the content of out of the whatever the lesion is. So for example, now if you have a cyst, so cyst, like cyst, they contain some fluid or semi-fluid. So in that, what you're doing is you're aspirating that fluid and with the help of that, you're diagnosing the lesion. So cytology is nothing but study of the cells. So this is nothing but the fine needle aspiration cytology. With the help of fine needle, you're aspirating the content and by that, you're doing the diagnosis with the help of like those cells, by studying those cells. So aspiration biopsy is the use of a needle and a syringe to penetrate a lesion for aspiration of its content. So in this, you're using a 18 to 24 gauge needle is used in fine needle. So the indications for fine needles are to determine if there is a presence of fluid within the lesion. Next is to know the type of fluid. So what type of fluid it is. To know that we're using this fine needle. Then third is when exploration of an intraosseous lesion is indicated. If there is a intraosseous lesion, so in that you're using a fine needle when you are exploring that lesion so in that you are seeing that it can be an intraosseous lesion so in that you are using this fine needle next is to rule out a vascular lesion prior to the open surgery next is the it can be used as a diagnostic screening at the community level so in the last video i have explained about the different like mass screening methods so fine needle it can be used as one of that method now how you exactly do this method so in this what you are doing is first you use the 18 gauge needle or whatever the size is so you're using a needle and it is connected to a 5 to 10 ml syringe so over here so first you're using this needle and it is connected to this syringe into the center of the mass via a small hole into the lesion so what you're doing is now you can see you are placing this needle into a into this lesion through this small hole so you are just penetrating your needle into the lesion so the tip of the needle it may need to be positioned in the multiple direction to locate a potential fluid center. So what you're going to do is after that, the tip of the needle, it is positioned in multiple directions so that you're locating whatever the potential fluid center is. So, so to locate that potential fluid center, you're moving this needle. So the tip of the needle. Then, then after that, the material, it is withdrawn during the aspiration biopsy and it is submitted for the pathological examination and for culturing. So the tissues or the cells within the lumen of the needles they are obtained by you are rotating the needle and the needle is then withdrawn so over here now you can see in this diagram so you have like inserted your needle into this lesion and after that what you're doing is you're just rotating the lumen of the needle and then you're aspirating it so you are you can see it over here and after that lastly you're sending this material whatever you have collected for the diagnosis or for the pathological examination this is how your fine needle aspiration it is so over here now this is the fine needle so with this now these are the cells so after collecting the cells now you can see this is the specimen so you can see over here so after staining it 
So you can see this under the microscope. So this is how it looks. So this is the aspiration biopsy from a mandibular cyst. So this is a mandibular cyst. Then a glass slide with the material that is obtained by the aspiration biopsy. Then there is a smearing of this aspirate and the glass slide after smearing and the fixation of the aspirate with the hairspray. So after you collect this material, then you're fixing that whatever the content is and then you're sending it for the examination. Now what are the advantages of it? So the obtained cells from any sides of the body, it is less labor than the biopsy. It, it permits like early start of the treatment. Then next is it can be obtained for various studies. So in this, if it is done repeatedly on most masses of the lesion, enough material, it can be obtained for other studies also. So when you're removing or when you're collecting that material, so in that the material, it is enough if you want to do other studies also. So in this, this is the advantage of it. Now disadvantage is it can be painful. It requires great skills. The needle, it can be damaged. So the needle, it can damage the vital structures. The internal bleeding is possible. So these are like various disadvantages. So it is not a diagnostic procedure, but it is adjuvant to biopsy. So you cannot use this fine needle aspiration as a sole method, but you can use this as a adjuvant to your biopsy. So now there is like a problem. So the inability, sometimes it like when you're withdrawing the material, so sometimes it will be like you are unable to withdraw that fluid or the air. So that indicates that the lesion, it is probably solid. So there's no content in that lesion. So if you're unable to withdraw the content, that means that lesion is solid. A radiolucent lesion in the jaw that yields the straw color fluid on aspiration, it is most likely a cystic lesion. So if you're, you, or if you're withdrawing the material and if you see, that it is a straw colored fluid. So that means it is a cystic lesion. The next is if you see there is pus, if you are withdrawing and you see there is a purulent exudate that is the pus, then it is the inflammatory or the infectious process should be considered. So in that case, you have to consider that it can be infect, infectious or the inflammatory process. Then the aspiration of the blood, it might indicate a vascular malformation within the bone. So if you are aspirating and if you see, that there is aspiration of the blood. So it indicates that there is a vascular malformation within the bone. Then any intrabony radiolucent lesion, it should be aspirated before the surgical intervention to rule out a vascular lesion as we have seen in the indications of it. So if the lesion, it is determined to be vascular in nature, the flow rate, it should be determined because the uncontrollable hemorrhage, it can occur if you are incising that lesion. So if you see that the lesion, it is vascular in, if it is vascular in nature, so in that the flow rate, it is determined for that case. So this is all about the fine needle aspiration cytology. Next is this core needle. Now we have seen there was this fine needle. So that means the needle, the thickness of the needle, it was less. Now this is a core needle. So the thickness of the needle over here, it is like, it is thicker. So because of that, it is known as core needle biopsy. Now in this, there are various types of needles which are used that are the true cut, Abrams, Silverman, then manganese, then white bore needles. They are used in this core needle technique. So this is like a true cut. So over here, this is a true cut type of needle. And this one is a Silverman. So these are specially designed biopsy needles. So these are like the specially designed biopsy needle. In this, you have an outer needle with trocar point. So in this, you have an outer needle and there's an inner needle. So what you're doing in this is the needle biopsy, it has been established as a safe procedure and it is routinely performed under the local anesthesia. Now over here, this is a core needle. So you have to give the patient local anesthesia because this can be painful. Then many pathologists, they believe that for the histological care, for the histological study, core tissue is more useful than the cytological material. So now in the fine needle, aspiration cytology we have seen that we are studying the cells but now many pathologists they believe that if you want to do the study then for that we need a core material and not just the cells to get proper diagnosis of it so the core needle biopsy it has emerged as an important sampling method in the diagnosis of the musculoskeletal tumor so it is a very important like biopsy type of technique in the musculoskeletal tumors so here what you are doing is the core of the deep tissue is taken by using one of the above mentioned needles. So you're you so you're removing the core of the lesion with any of this needle. Then aspiration of the chunk of the cell aggregate is done by approaching the lesion at approximately 45 degree. It is then transferred to the slide. It is air dried or it is fixed with 
ethanol and it is strained and it is used for grading the malignant tumor and to know their invasiveness so in this what you are doing is now you can see over here so this is the lesion so how the principle of true cut is so this is the lesion and this is a needle then what you are doing is then you are pushing so now you have this inner part and the outer part so what you are doing is then you are pushing the needle into the lesion so this is a core needle and you have you can see it over here so this is the area in which your material or your lesion it will get engaged then you are pushing that needle into the lesion and then what you are doing is then you are sliding that sheet that is the outer cover of this needle now you can see over here so first what you have done is you are pushing the like inner needle over here so the sheath or the outer part of your needle it was as it is then the next step what you do is then you are sliding the sheath over the needle to cut the specimen so because of that then you withdraw it now you can see it over here in this needle so the core material it is withdrawn and this is known as core needle biopsy so this is the silver man and this is the true cut now the next is the punch biopsy punch biopsy now as the name says punch so now you know you have those punching machines in which you punch your paper and then the area or the paper it is punched out so this is nothing but like that only this is a like a punch which is used so now in this so it involves a special instrument which is known as punch for the removal of a portion of a lesion so you are using this instrument so these are like the various diameter instruments this is a smaller over here you can see so it is 2 mm this is 2.5 mm so the size it increases so these are like the various types of your various diameter punch so in this you are using a special instrument for the removal of a portion of the lesion the punches they are composed of a circular blade or the trephine which is attached to a pencil like handle so over here so this is like a pencil like handle and this is attached so it can be like this it is a circular blade or it is a trephine which is attached to this pencil like handle so so that you can easily like use this the instrument it is gently rotated with the firm downward pressure and what you are doing is you are rotating this first you are rotating this punch with the firm downward pressure the punch is pushed down until the subcutaneous fat it is reached over here now you can see so you are like pressing it or pushing it down until the subcutaneous fat it is reached the biopsy is specially well suited for the diagnosis of oral manifestation of the so this punch biopsy it is used in the case of mucocutaneous and the vesculo ulcerative diseases such as lichen planus pemphigus etc so you are using this punch biopsy in most of this cases like the mucocutaneous and the vesculo ulcerative diseases then the range is in the size of now you can see over here 2 till 10 mm in diameter so you have this different diameter punches which are available then the smaller diameter it should be avoided due to risk of over manipulating and crushing the tissue so you should not use a smaller diameter punch because what happens is then you are like after that when you are punching it so you won't get the proper lesion and because of that you are over manipulating it the technique it is easily performed with a low incidence of the post surgical morbidity the suturing in regards to a punch biopsy procedure is usually not required as the surgical wound it heals by the secondary intention so in this case you don't need suturing to be done as you are doing in the incisional biopsy or excisional biopsy but in punch you do not need to do the suturing if the lesion is very small the advantage is it is ease of the technique then the sutures it may not be required if the small diameter punch is used it may produce a more satisfactory specimen in the bone down tissues like the hard palate the drawbacks can be it may not be adequate for the biopsy of the deeper pathology because now in this you are just doing till the subcutaneous tissue then it may be difficult to biopsy freely movable tissue now you can see the advantage is it can be used in hard palate but if the tissues are freely movable like soft palate on the floor of the mouth so it is difficult in that region so what you basically do is now you can see in this diagram so over here this is the lesion which is present so this is a suspicious lesion on the right lateral tongue so this is the lesion that you can see the next is the area it is stained with the toluidine blue the 5 mm punch so this is a 5 mm punch which you are using the biopsy instrument it is ready, it is ready for incision so first you have stained this lesion with the toluidine blue and then you are taking this 5 mm punch the next is now you are making a incision so what you have done is so as we have seen the instrument is gently rotated so you are not placing your punch on this lesion and then you are gently rotating it with the firm downward pressure 
The next is the specimen. So now you can see. So this area it is punched. So you can see this circular part, the blood. You can see over here. And after that, now you have created this punch with this punch instrument. And what you do is the specimen. It is then removed with the scissor. Now you have created this punch, and then you are removing this with the scissor. Now this is the. Now you can see over here. This is the coagulation which is obtained within the minutes of the gauze pressure. So when you are applying gauze pressure on it. So you'll see there is this coagulation which is like seen, and this is your specimen which is removed and it is ready for fixation. And after that, you are doing the diagnosis of it. So this is all about the punch biopsy. Starting with the incisional biopsy. So it is a biopsy that samples only a particular portion or a representative part of a lesion. Now this is a incisional biopsy. So what you are doing if the lesion is very big. So what you do is you just remove a small part of the lesion. and because of that it samples only a particular portion or a representative part of that lesion so if a lesion is large or it has a different characteristics in various location so in that more than one area may need to be sampled incisional biopsy so if you see if the lesion is very large and there are different characteristics so in that case you have to take like multiple samples for this incisional biopsy to study what exactly it is the indication for incisional is if the lesion it is larger than 2 cm now in this you can see the lesion it is very big so because of that you are just taking a smaller part of the lesion then if the dangerous location of if the location of the lesion whatever it is it is near the nerves or the vessels so in that case you cannot excise that like complete lesion because of that it can damage your nerves or vessels so in that case you are using the incisional biopsy and where there is a great suspicions of the malignancy so where you are suspecting that there is malignancy so in that case you are using this incisional biopsy the technique is now the representative area they are biopsied in a wedge fashion so this is the wedge fashion so first you are giving the la and after that the area it is so the area the representative area it is biopsied in the wedge fashion the length it should be approximately 3 times the width so the length of this it should be approximately 3 times the width now you can see over here so width it is 1 and the length it is 3 times than your width then a narrow deep specimen is it is better than the broad shallow one now in this you can see the narrow and the deeper specimen it is better than this type of which is the broad so over here this is the broad and it is a shallow so in this you are not you like completely taking the lesion out of it so if it is a deeper one so because of that now you can take proper lesion out of it and because it's like superficial changes may be different from those in the deeper in the tissue so because of that you need to take the area or the specimen which should be narrower and it should be deep the margin it should extend into the normal tissue on the deep surface so whenever you are taking the incisional biopsy you have so you have to include the normal tissue with it to study the difference between it then the necrotic tissue it should be avoided because it may be non diagnostic so ne the necrotic tissue it is like avoided then you are using sharp blade and usually you are not injecting the la into the lesion if the patient they are suffering like if they have pain so you are like injecting around that lesion but you are not injecting into the lesion because there is a problem of this artifact which can be seen when you are like seeing it under the microscope so because of that you are not injecting local anesthesia into the lesion directly the disadvantages are there can be crush splints and hemorrhage are the artifacts more frequently found in the incisional oral biopsy so now as i have said so there is this artifact if you are directly injecting la then because of that there can be artifacts which can see then theoretically seeding of the cancer cells into the adjoining tissue it is a disadvantage of this incisional biopsy so this is the incisional biopsy so there is this demarcation of the lesion then the surgical field after the removal of the specimen and after that the operation site after the suturing so first you are like demarcating that lesion so we have seen the length it is three times the width and it should be deep and it should be narrow the next is this part is the surgical field after the removal so now you have seen you have removed this area which you have demarcated by that incision so this is incisional now you are making an incision so because of that this is incisional biopsy and this is after that you do the suturing of it so this is all about the incisional biopsy incisional biopsy is 
now if the lesion it is too small so if it is smaller in size in that you are completely removing that lesion so incisional biopsy it is a type of curative and the diagnostic type of biopsy because in this you are even treating that lesion by just removing that complete lesion now where you can see this is a very smaller lesion and because of that you are completely removing that lesion so indication is it should be employed with smaller lesion which are less than 1 cm the lesion on the clinical exam it appears benign if it is a malignant then you cannot do excisional in that case you are doing the incisional one then when complete excision with a margin of normal tissue is possible without mutilation so when you can completely remove the margins when you can completely remove the lesion with the normal tissue in that only you are using this excisional biopsy now the technique is an excisional biopsy it implies the complete removal of the lesion so a perimeter of the normal tissue which is 2 to 3 mm surrounding the lesion is included with the specimen so you are including around 2 to 3 mm of the surrounding normal tissue with the lesion in this excisional biopsy so that there are no chances of recurrence the excisional biopsy it should be performed on a smaller lesion which are less than 1 cm in diameter and that appears clinically benign then pigmented and the vascular lesion it should be removed if possible in their entirety this avoids the seeding of the melanin producing tumor cells into the one site or in the case of hemangioma it allows the clinician to address the feeder vessels so because of that you are using so you are removing the 2 to 3 mm normal surrounding tissue also with the lesion so in this now the incision it is made around the lesion now excisional is because you are completely excising that lesion and incisional was you are just making an incision and just removing a smaller part of it so this excisional is first you are making an incision around this lesion with 2 to 3 mm of the normal tissue then the blunt undermining of the mucus of the wound margin after the removal of the tissue is done and the operation site it looks like this after the suturing so now here you can see so this was the lesion you have completely removed this lesion and after that you have sutured it out so this is all about the excisional biopsy the next is the frozen section so in surgical oncology the treatment of the malignant oropharyngeal tumor so in that case what you are doing is you are excising the tumor with 1 cm margin of the normal tissue around the tumor and this margin is known as clear margin so there are some cases like we fail to achieve this so this reduces the chance of the local control and there can be reoccurrence which are which is expected and because of that when we are doing excisional biopsy we are removing 2 to 3 cm of that normal clear margin so to overcome this problem for frozen section analysis it is taken so what you are doing in this frozen section is here the unfixed tissue it is rapidly frozen using the co2 in a cryostat machine to around like minus 20 degree to minus 30 300 degrees celsius and the tissue it is cut into thin slices so this is the main thing what you're doing so for what you're doing is like we have seen we take the part and then we fixed it so before fixing it to like overcome the problem of recurrence so what we do is we fix we froze that particular we freeze that particular lesion so in that we're using this frozen section in which we are freezing it at around minus 20 degree to minus 300 degree celsius so indications are to make an immediate surgical therapeutic decision to determine whether a lesion it is benign malignant or it is a non neoplastic lesion then to establish the adequacy of the clearance of the margin then a certain metastatic uh, involvement of the regional lymph node to reduce it reduces the time of processing from 18 hours to 5 minutes because this is frozen section so the method is you can use a freezing microtome using that CO2 gas or there can be this refrigerated microtome that is the cryostat. So technique is the biopsy tissue is frozen in a mixture of isopentene and a solid carbon dioxide at around minus 7, 70 degree Celsius. Then the sections of 5 to 7 mm they are made on the refrigerated microtome which is adhered to the glass slide at the room temperature then they are fixed with the formalin after that first you have frozen it and then you are fixing it with the formalin then what you are doing is then they are stained with the HNE and the procedure it is completed within 5 to 10 minutes from the time of receiving the specimen till it is stained so the remainder of this tissue it is stored in 10% buffered formaldehyde and it is routinely processed so this is all about the frozen section 
so there can be errors in the diagnosis it can be due to sampling by the surgeon or the pathologist interpretation by the pathologist and difference in the communication between the two then what are the different uh, disadvantages so there can be errors in the sampling and the interpretation when you're comparing it with the routinely processed tissue then there can be differentiation between the reactive epithelial changes it has to be a disadvantage that only 8, 8 to 16 micron thick section it can be cut and finer details of the tissue it cannot be examined so this is like we have seen in frozen section what we have seen is you are taking that lesion so before freeze before fixing it you are freezing it at this particular temperature and then you are making like very thin slice of it so you are making this 5 to 7 mm they are made so sections are made and after that you are staining it and then you are seeing it under the microscope for the diagnosis the next is this assisted guidance so now what is this assisted guidance so most tumor that are visible or palpable it can be examined without the aid of radiologic examination so if you are easily if you can easily see a lesion then you don't need this radiological imaging but whereas there are some deep lesions that cannot be palpated as well as for the sm small if there are lesions which are small deep which are mobile and that are difficult to palpate and because of that they require this radiologic control to ensure that the target tissue sample is obtained and secondly this guidance it reduces the number of aspirates and helpful in differentiating the tissue within the lesion so if there are some tissue so if there are some lesion which are non palpated which are small which are deep and mobile so in that case what you are doing is you are like taking the guidance of this mri ct or ultrasound so that you can properly get that lesion then the various are the ultrasound ct and the mri so first is this ultrasound over here this is the first picture is this ultrasound so this technique it has the advantages of being so it is non-invasive it is quick and it is easy and it can be performed with the patient under the local anesthesia so it has an advantage over the blind percutaneous biopsy because the needle it can be visualized in the organ and the organ it is scanned after the biopsy for the possible for the possible complications so now over here so like with the help of this ultrasound so where exactly you are putting your needle at so like you are using or you are going to the proper side so you can see this with this ultrasound so this is the picture with the help of this ultrasound over here now you can see you are inserting this needle for the aspiration so with the help of this ultrasound so you can see that image like you're going properly into that lesion so the another advantage is unlike other radiographic biopsy procedure ionizing radiation it is not used for this imaging so this is the main advantage like in mri and ct you are using ionizing radiation but in this ultrasound you are not using ionizing radiation however ultrasound guided biopsy it is not possible when gas or bone it prevents the visualization of the biopsy region so this is a disadvantage of it now the city guided is now in this the city guided biopsy it uses real time city images to help the doctor guide a needle to suspect the lesion to obtain the tissue sample so these all are like you are inserting the needle properly into that lesion with the radiographic imaging so occasionally the IV contrast is needed to help the radiologist identify and target the lesion prior to the biopsy. The CT image, it is immediately available on the monitor, allowing the radiologist to view the biopsy target. So the indication of CT guided biopsy are the lymph node or the masses that are not completely identifiable using the ultrasound. If you cannot identify the lymph nodes or the masses with the help of this ultrasound, in that case, you're using the CT. The lesions which are near the skull base. So CT is optimal for localizing these lesions. But disadvantages is there is radiation exposure, limited possible scan plane orientation, low soft tissue contrast, and poor. So there are this various disadvantage of the CT guided biopsy. Now the MRI is it is the method for procedure guidance that combines the imaging benefits of the magnetic resonance, including the excellent tissue contrast and the multiplanar. So what all you can see the disadvantage in city, it becomes the advantages of your MRI. And because of that, this MRI, it obviously is the best if you want to use it. So the MRI, so with the help of this MRI, you're doing the biopsy. Then this is over here, this is the endoscope guided biopsy. 
so endoscopy is nothing but the examination of the interior of a canal or a hollow viscous by a means of a endoscope so you're using the endoscope over here so the endoscopic technique it may prove to be particularly important when you're dealing with large cystic lesions that may contain neoplastic processes such as ameloblastoma so in that case you're using this endoscopic guided biopsy so if there are chances so if there are this ameloblastomas so in that you can use this endoscopic guided biopsy so endoscopy it may prove to be an important tool for the internal examination of the large cyst jaw of the large cyst of the jaws that may contain regional neoplastic processes within the cystic lining so this is about the various assisted guidance biopsy methods in which where you cannot see the lesion properly in that you are using various imaging techniques that can be your ultrasound mri ct or this endoscopic method so over here now you can see with the help of this endoscopy so you can see over here this is the growth which you can see this is the exophytic so the endoscopic view it shows a area of a thickened lining which is containing this exophytic protrusion and this protrusion it can be around like 10 millimeters in diameter so when you are using this endoscope so over here the endoscope it is positioned into the lesion and after that now you can see the lesion so this lesion it would it like you cannot see this like with the naked eyes you cannot see this properly so in that case you are using this endoscopic method now what are the various instruments that i use for the biopsy so these all are the instruments that i use for your biopsy procedure now what are the principles to be followed during the procedure so first is the anesthesia then the next is the tissue stabilization and after that the next is the hemostasis incisions handling of the tissue then the specimen care the margins of the biopsy surgical closure and the biopsy data sheet so anesthesia block anesthesia is preferred to infiltration when blocks they are not possible you are using distant infiltration you are never injecting the la into the lesion directly because of that it can lead to that la artifacts so you are never injecting local anesthesia into the lesion so first is you are doing the anesthesia the next is the tissue stabilization so it can be stabilized with the digital stabilization or you are using specialized retractors or forceps or there are this retract or you are using sutures or towel clips then you are achieving hemostasis suction device it should be avoided in such cases then gauze compressors they are usually adequate then the gauze which is wrapped low volume suction it may be used if it is needed in such cases so first you have given the anesthesia then you are stabilizing the tissue then you are doing the hemostasis so you are just achieving the hemostasis incision so incision the principle for incisions are so the incision in should be made with a scalpel it should be co converging so they should be converging and they should not be broad they should extend beyond the suspected depth of the lesion they should be parallel important structures the margin it should involve 2 to 3 mm of the normal structure then if if it is benign so it should be 2 to 3 mm if it is benign and it is 5 mm or more may be necessary with the lesion that appears malignant so if it is malignant lesion in that case you need to like include 5 mm of the normal structure then how is the handling of the tissue specimen so direct handling of the lesion it will expose it to crush injury resulting in the alteration in the cellular architecture so you need to handle the specimen very properly the specimen care is it is essential to avoid the distortion of the histologic and the cytologic details so the specimen it should be immediately placed in the 10 percent formalin solution and it should be completely immersed into it it should not be like your specimen is half immersed and it is half not so it should be completely immersed so the other fixatives so which can be used so this is the most important part that you are fixing your specimen so there are various other fixatives which can be used the margins of the biopsy is so the margin of the tissue it should be identified to orient the pathologist the cell suture is often adequate the surgical closure is primary closure of the wound it is usually possible the biopsy data sheets so after that you have done so these are like the principles that are followed during the procedure so biopsy data sheet a biopsy data sheet it should be completed and the specimen immediately it is labeled so your sheet it should be completed and the specimen it is labeled then all pertinent history and the description of the lesion it must be conveyed so what all history is about the patient's data the history like what were the symptoms and everything the clinical de description of how the lesion it looks like 
so this is like what your biasc data should it should contain of so there should be like complete demographic data of the patient the history like why the patient with what history the patient came to the clinic then the clinical description how it exactly look then after that the nature of the biopsy if the radiographs are taken if some photographs are taken so you are attaching it with the biopsy data sheet and the description of the biopsy specimen so nature of the biopsy is which type of biopsy you have done so at what time like with what it was fixed what was the time and everything the nature of biopsy is to be done and the description of the biopsy is like you are describing like everything the site size location like everything about that biopsy specimen so it should include the name of the clinician also the date the specimen was obtained then about the specimen like everything about it and it should include the diagnosis as well as the complete microscopic description so this is all about like your biopsy data sheet what all it should contain the next is this intraosseous and the heart tissue biopsy the intraosseous region they are most often the result of the problems which are associated with the dentition so these are known as the intraosseous region so the clinical examination so the indications are the intraosseous region that failed to respond to the routine treatment of the dentition so in that case you are using so you are doing this intraosseous biopsy the clinical examination is you are palpating the area of the lesion and you are comparing it with the opposite side then any radiolucent lesion it should have a aspiration biopsy so if the lesion it is radiolucent so that mean it has some fluid into it so for that you should have a aspiration biopsy to be done before doing this intraosseous the next is information from the aspiration it will provide valuable information about the lesion so whether it is solid so the content it is solid or it is fluid filled or it is vascular or it is without content that means it is a solid type of lesion so with help of this you'll know which exactly lesion it is so this is about the intraosseous biopsy what are the principles of surgery to be followed for the intraosseous lesion so in this a mucoperiosteal flap it should be designed to allow the adequate access for the incisional or the excisional biopsy the incision it should be over a sound bone so incision they are made over the sound bone and not the necrosed bone then if there are any cortical perforation which is present so if the cystic lesion so for example if there is ameloblastoma so ameloblastoma in ameloblastoma you have seen like a clinical feature is cortical perforation so if there are cortical perforation if the lesion is too big so it can lead to cortical perforation and if there are any cortical perforation then they should be considered when you are designing the flaps then the flaps it should be of full thickness then the major neurovascular structure they should be avoided they should not be damaged then the osseous window it should be submitted with the specimen osseous perforation now you are perforating the bone now this is a hard tissue the windows it should be submitted with the specimen and the perforation it should be enlarged to gain the access properly then avoid the roots and the neurovascular structure the tissue consistency and the nature of the lesion it will determine the ease of the removal so how the tissue consistency is and the what is the nature of the lesion it will determine the ease of removal then the incisional biopsy it only requires removal of a section of the tissue now as you know incisional is removing only a small part then the soft tissue overlying the lesion it should be reapproximated following thorough irrigation of the operative site then the specimen should be handled as we have seen previously how we are handling the other biopsy specimens how we have done for the other biopsies like we are fixing it properly and then we are sending it then we are staining and then we are seeing for the diagnosis now these are like the guidelines for a appropriate biopsy now which type of lesion it is and which type of biopsy you should do so this is about it so if there is a chronic ulcer or squamous cell carcinoma and that you are doing this incisional biopsy now we have seen if it is a malignant lesion we are doing incisional so if there is leukoplakia or erythroplakia there is a pre malignant lesion so in that case you are using a incisional biopsy incisional biopsy or a punch biopsy of the worst area then the if there is lichen planus in that you can use incisional biopsy if there are bullous lesion like pemphigus pemphigoid you can use punch biopsy or incisional biopsy then if there is mucosal careful excision is done then if there is granuloma epulis in that you are doing excisional biopsy if minor salivary gland tumors are present on the palate so you are doing deep incisional biopsy and if it is present on the upper lip then you are doing excision biopsy and for the major salivary gland tumors you are doing fnsc so this is like a guidelines for it now what are the dangers of biopsy what are the problems that you can see with the biopsy they can be spreading hemorrhage infection wounding of the cancer tissue and there can be operative trauma so these all are the dangers of biopsy and the last is this artifact so artificial man made products are known as artifact 
so you are producing so you are yourself producing something onto your specimen so that becomes your artifact so artifacts they are the alteration in the tissue morphology that results from various form of so it can be the alteration in the tissue so now you have collected your specimen and then you are using it for the diagnosis but this artifact is you are altering this tissue morphology it can be due to mechanical chemical or the thermal insult to the tissue specimen which is removed for the diagnostic purpose so the causes of tissue artifact it can be the clinical application of the chemicals or they can be local injection of the anesthesia into the lesion or surgical sectioning if there is excessive heat which is used or if there is excessive freezing then surgical mis mishandling of the specimen if there is inadequate fixation or improper fixation medium then faulty tissue processing or there is improper staining so any of this can lead to artifact then during surgery it can lead to injection artifact that is like this so over here the la it is injected directly into the lesion and it will appear when you you when you are seeing it under the microscope so you will see this artifact and this will deteriorate or it will alter the tissue morphology and the diagnosis it becomes like difficult to diagnose in such artifact cases then there can be forceps artifact fulguration artifact this is nothing but the heat artifact the laser artifact so when you are using lasers when you are doing laser biopsy they can be this laser artifact suction artifact then during the fixation so this is the artifact which are created at the time of surgery then during fixation and transport there can be fixation artifact freezing artifact artifact during the transportation so if not handling the specimen properly it can lead to any of this then at the time of tissue processing so at the time of sectioning during the embedding so these are the artifacts which are created at other time so this is the crushed type of artifact the specimen it is crushed this is a split type of artifact this is a forcep so these are like the various types of artifact which will deteriorate the which will deteriorate the tissue which will deteriorate the tissue morphology and because of that it becomes difficult to diagnose that case it is not very easy to get a very good biopsy specimen nor it is very difficult if you are doing the procedure carefully and properly so this was all about biopsy in depth now if you get a question even in your third year or final year you can write everything about it so that was all about biopsy i hope you found this video helpful thank you so much